The purpose of this particular activity is to continue investigating correlations between quantitative variables, and we're going to talk about the line of best fit and the meaning of the different pieces of the line of best fit. So let's look at this situation here. So Medavi suspects that there is a relationship between the number of text messages high school students send and their academic achievement. To explore this, she asks a random sample of 52 students at her school how many text messages they sent yesterday and what their GPA was during the most recent grading period. Her data are summarized in the scatter plot that you can see below, and the least squares regression line is also shown. The least squares regression line is also known as the line of best fit. Okay, so there are a few things that I want to draw your attention to on this graph. First of all, notice that it has a negative correlation to it. That is, the scatter plot has a negative slope. The line of best fit has a negative slope. And it appears to be either a moderately weak or a weak correlation. This is very spread out, though we don't know the R value on this particular graph. Down at the very, very bottom, and it might be kind of hard to see, it says that the equation of the least squares regression line is GPA hat equals 3.8 minus 0 0.005, and then inside parentheses, texts sent. And our focus is going to be on this equation. All right, so as it says on the graph, the equation of the line of best fit is GPA, and then that notation over the GPA is read as hat. So I read this GPA hat equals 3.8 minus, and they actually got this wrong here. This should be 0 0.005 texts sent. And we want to interpret the quantities negative 0.005 and 3.5 in the context of these data. All right, first thing that I want to touch on, though, is this GPA hat. This is coming from our line of best fit. And so this is the predicted GPA. The actual observed GPA for the students included in the study is represented by each one of those little red dots in the scatter plot. Our regression equation will make predictions about the GPA of a student that was not surveyed, and that's why it gets the hat over it. Okay, so then the next thing that we're going to look at is this 3.8 and the negative 0 0.005. Notice that the negative 0 0.005 is being multiplied to the number of text messages that have been sent. Hopefully the form of that equation looks fairly familiar to you. This is very, very close to slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. x is our variable. Remember that m is our slope or our rate of change. And b is the y-intercept. So looking back at my equation, I need to figure out which one, the 3.8 or the negative 0.005, which one of those is the slope, which one of those is the y-intercept. Well, I have a couple things to help me out. The first thing is I can see the graph with this line of best fit, and I see it has a negative slope. The other thing that I know about slope is I'm always going to find that right next to my independent variable, my x variable, which if you look up here on the graph, that is texts sent. And that is right here in the equation. So this negative 0.005 is representing the slope of the line of best fit. Notice the 3.8 does not have a variable next to it. And so even though it comes right after the equal sign, that means the 3.8 is the y-intercept. So it's not enough to say that 3.8 is the y-intercept and negative 0.005 is the slope because that does not explain in context the meaning of these pieces. So that 3.8, since that's the y-intercept, that would be the expected GPA for a student that sends zero text messages throughout the day. 
The slope, remember slope is rise over run, or the change in our y variable divided by the change in our x variable. Our y variable is GPA, and our x variable is text messages sent. So since this is a negative slope, what we're going to expect to see is a decrease in the GPA for students who send more text messages. Specifically, we're going to expect to see a decrease of 0 .005 in their GPA for each text message sent. Okay, so if the predicted decrease in the GPA is 0 .005 for each text message a student sends, how much would you expect their GPA to decrease by if they sent 10 texts? What about if they sent an extra 20 texts? How much would you expect the GPA to go down for a student who sent an extra 100 texts? This is where that rate of change, that slope, comes in really handy. I can predict the, the decrease in a student's GPA for an extra 10 texts by taking those 10 text messages sent and multiplying them by our slope of negative 0.005. And when I do that, I discover that their GPA goes down 0.05. So if a student had a 3.8 GPA and they sent an extra 10 texts, I would expect their GPA to go down to a 3.75. With 20 extra texts, I'm going to take that slope, negative 0.005. I'm going to multiply it by the 20 extra text messages sent. And when I do that, I see that there would be an expected decrease of 0.1 in their GPA. And then with 100 text messages sent or extra text messages sent, I see that the expected decrease in their GPA would be 0.5. So a student that had a 3.8 GPA originally would go down to a 3.3. So the big takeaways from this today are that when we are looking at a line of best fit and we want to know its meaning in context, we're going to be looking at slope intercept form. So the first thing we need to do is to determine which piece of information is the slope, which piece is the y intercept, and then we want to interpret that in context given the variables. Remember, our x-axis is our independent variable and our y-axis is our dependent variable.